Hello and welcome to Bevy Basics. In this episode, resources. We'll start with a concept overview, followed by Bevy's implementation, how to use resources in Bevy, followed up by a few examples. Timestamps for each of these sections can be found on screen now or linked in the description. In an ECS, there are three ways to persistently store data as components and resources in the world or locally to each system. In this video, I will be focusing on resources. In the simplest form, a resource is a unique piece of data stored in the ECS world that can be requested by a system in order to perform their functionality. Resources consist of static but not constant data, allowing for one system to affect the behavior of another without any knowledge of the other system's purpose, function, or even existence. As seen in this diagram, user input as is provided as a configuration resource that is then used by the first system during startup in order to initialize a future resource for another system in all future update frames to use as its resource. In another example here, constant data is used to initialize a resource that is then used by a future system or user input is used at the beginning of a frame in order to create a resource that is sent to the world and then used by other systems during the update. It is also possible to create system it is also possible to create resources purely from the world state. In this diagram a query is sent to the system and a resource returned that is then used by a different system later on. Because resources are managed by the ECS, it is simple and easy to track if a resource has been modified since the last time a system requested it. Bevy provides a trait that is automatically implemented for any struct that implements send and sync. Bevy can then generate the system parameters res and res mute for the corresponding struct. Bevy also provides non-send and non-send mute for resources that do not implement send and sync. The res family of system parameters can be used to request a resource in a system by putting it in the system's declaration. Doing so will get you a fat pointer to the represented resource, whether mutable or unmutable depending on the type of wrapper used. Bevy will panic if a system requests a resource that does not exist at the time the system was executed. This behavior can be prevented by wrapping the parameter in an option. It is then your responsibility to take the appropriate action based on if the resource exists or not, whether that is initializing the resource or simply running a separate set of routines if that resource is not present. A struct can implement from world if the resource needs to do things that are not possible or may not be available at compile time, such as access other resources in the world. Any struct that implements default will automatically inherit that as its behavior for the from world, unless overwritten by the user. To add a resource to your Bevy application, you can insert it while you are building the application or initialize it with its from world. It is also possible to add resources during the execution of a system by using Bevy's command struct to insert said resource. Resources can be used just as you would use normal structs inside a system. Simply request access with res-t or res-t mute parameter. There, these are just fat pointers to the resource in the world and can be used exactly the same as their equivalent reference type. Once you have acquired a reference to a resource, it will act just as any other reference to the type that it is wrapping. The only key difference being that resources provide the is added and is changed function. These allow you to determine if the resource was inserted the last time the system was executed or if the resource has changed in said time, respectively. Unfortunately, because the type is wrapped, it is not yet possible for Rust's borrow checker to make sure some of the normal checks that it would on a reference, such as allowing independent mutability of each field. This can result in double mutability errors and some IDEs such as Visual Studio Code struggling to generate IntelliSense for generic resources. There is a simple workaround, however. 
there is a dereference method on the resource. Calling this method will turn the resource into its underlying reference type. This does have the drawback of the reference being marked as as changed in future systems. Because resources need to be unique and Bevy is using structs to identify resources, it is needed to wrap your resources of common types such as handles inside of wrappers. In this example, I have a fancy font and a default font which are both wrappers around a handle. This allows you to reuse a struct as two different resources by simply wrapping them in different named new types. In this example, I initial I add to my app an initialized default font, followed by an inserting a custom colors resource, and then I initialize the color wheel resource. I then add a system that adds new custom colors to the color wheel. The custom colors, as seen, is simply a struct that consists of an array of 10 bevy colors. The color wheel is just a vector of handles to the standard materials. The default font is a struct wrapping a bevy handle to a font. I then implement from world for the font. Inside, I request from the world the assets server resource which I then load my font and return the default font. This will initialize the default font into the world for future systems to use without me needing to worry about whether the resource system is run before or after. The from world for the color wheel is slightly more complicated. To start, it creates a vector of handles, after which it requests the custom colors resource from the world. It then gets mutable access to the world's assets standard materials. After which the materials array is then filled with standard materials with varying colors. I then check to see if the custom colors resource was found. And if so, I create materials for those colors. I then return the color wheel with its vector of materials. There is a simple getter inside the color wheel allowing one to specify the set of colors and how far into each color set they would like to get. With this example, it is initialized so that there are 10 colors in each set accessed by the numpad and there are a red, blue, green and custom color set. There is also a random color set that will just return any color in the array. There's an add new custom function that I have created that is run every frame. One of the parameters for this function, one of the parameters for this function is an optional resource for custom colors. From there, I check to see if this resource exists. If not, I return early. If it does exist, I iterate through all the colors in the resource, adding them to the color wheels array. Finally, I finish by removing the custom colors resource from the world. This prevents this function from executing multiple times on one iteration of the resource. Altogether, this example allows you to create a resource of color wheel that can be accessed in any system in order to get standard materials of a set color with a known index. It is also possible to dynamically load new sets of custom colors that can be requested from the color wheel at runtime. To add on to this example, try implementing an identifier for which custom set the colors should be added to. This would allow for you to dynamically load palettes into your game. This could be useful for voxel art games or other games where the same art is shared but may require different colored sets depending on the level or environment. To continue on the example in a more practical use case, I have here a function that requests my color wheel resource and will change the color of the ball on screen based on what button was pressed. It uses the inputs resource for the keyboard to then create to check which buttons are being pressed. From there, it will call the get color index and hand in the colors resource. That function is defined down here and simply looks at which keyboard key was pressed in order to determine which color indent in the set to be used. 
All the code in these examples can be found in my GitHub link below. That concludes this episode of Bevy Basics. It would be appreciated if you would like, comment, and subscribe to this video, as I am very close to reaching 100 subscribers.